Uh, Akshay has a question here. How can I add one SharePoint private team site members, show SharePoint site members group, to a new created, newly created SharePoint site and give them read-only permissions? I don't have an on-prem server. Everything this is is in the cloud and SharePoint online. So when you create a SharePoint site, there are three default permission groups that are created. There's the owners, the members, and the visitors. And their permissions are full access or full control, um, con contribute, which lets them add or, and even delete things, which sometimes I don't agree with, the deletion part of it. And right. then you have the visitors. Um, now, how that equates to teams, I have still haven't figured out where the visitors come into play because there's not really that role in teams if it's a teams um, supported site or teams backend site. But if you add them to the visitor role, there's two, you can change those or you can create your own custom group, but you can change it to view only or restricted view only, which um, view only they would be able to download and access the content offline if they needed to, but the restricted view allows them to only look at it. They can't print it. They can't download it. They, they can't change anything. So there's a couple of different levels there. And there's, I think there's 20 some different checkboxes when you go to create a custom permission level that you can decide exactly what they're able to do. That would be my answer. Stacy, you're muted. Sorry, to me, <laughs> Teams assumes that they need permission to do something, right? Not just view, which is why we don't see it in Teams. So if you have Teams, it's, you know, you want them to do something. You want them to interact, collaborate, well, which is the whole purpose of it, right? If you have a scenario there where you do have a, a team but want to restrict access, you can always go and have a, a an unattached SharePoint site and library, yeah. have those permission levels, make sure those people are in there as as uh, you know mm -hmm. visitors. And then they'll then any content that you put in that place, you'll still have access and control there. And you can add in and add to a tab and access that content. This is one of those things where I, again, where people were struggling with the flatter architecture of teams saying, look, you can still have complexity, mm -hmm. just don't have it, don't use the out of the box SharePoint sites that are you know created when a team is created, but have yet a, a secondary. SharePoint site that's standalone and then have you know provide access there. And I'm only Not, gonna add I, like I don't use that anymore. I don't do that stuff right. anymore. I, I I stick with the flat and the out of the box. Like, but you have those tools. Yeah. And the only thing, the difficulty with that is the fact that you have to know which teams are set up that way and which ones are not. So it's an administrative overhead to do those things, right? Yep. So You've got to keep that in mind along with that because otherwise you're going people are going to end up in the wrong thing with the wrong permissions and it's no better than document libraries when people are breaking permissions or you know document level permissions. I, but I'd say that it, it's not a solution that scales. Right. But if you're doing a one off and you have that need and you are managing that actively managing that um then you have that option. But you're right. Yep. It's it's not a scalable. You get hit by a bus. Good luck to the people taking that over. Document, 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 right? Document. <laughs> yeah. Well, and if, to your point, if you add or remove people, you have to remember there's multiple sources that are being surfaced right. in the team, and those people have to be added to both sites or both permission groups. Or when you create the SharePoint site, the team SharePoint group can be used as the contributors or the owners group of another SharePoint site. You don't want to duplicate or, or create exact same permission groups in two different sites when you can use the same one. Maybe. Yeah. Right. yeah, you don't have to and create just brand new ones. And just remember, whoever sets that up <clears throat> may not be the person that is the people who are answering the phone as support to help that person with their permission. So you're asking for a nightmare there. So document and make it public so he knows that that has special permissions, right? Let's just, let's just clarify. It's a, it's a nightmare for out of the box management and governance. But with third-party tools, it's mm -hmm. pretty pretty simple actually. Can be, can be, depend if you can set be. it up properly and. Yeah, but I mean, you could go and look at the profile of an individual. Somebody leaves the company, see every site, every team, every group, every community that they are a member of, and change yep. that. 
Yeah. But then the support team, typically FYI, admins have that access because they can see into the back end. But who are the per people that actually get that support call? It's not the admin. It's tier right. one support. Yeah. And they so, go, uh, oh. It, yeah, <laughs> it's a balancing act, right? It's completely a balancing act. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, you know, Stacy, we've done some projects together and we always put the primary point of contact on the main SharePoint page. This is yeah. who you contact if you have an issue here. Don't yeah. call the help desk because they can help you reset your password or, you know, doesn't power on or don't have network access, whatever. You know, often they don't know and may not even have access to the sites that you're having a problem with. The people web part is my friend. <laughs> my friend. Yeah. I, I always appreciate that, whether I'm going into a Yammer community or a SharePoint site or whatever, mm -hmm. when I see that like over on the right nav or the left nav and see a yeah. link, a list of it, I just, it, it, it right there, it, it's, it's um, it just makes me think of uh, that scene from uh, Tommy Boy, you know, it's like, oh, seeing that label that it's, you know, on there, it just, it gives me, it warms the heart to know that that, that you know, protection is there of that's guaranteed. And then he does the whole thing about, uh, you know, his head and the bull and being able to, you know, you know, the quote I'm talking about. Uh, I'm with you. Um, One of the best but, movies uh, ever. So yeah. and, and the, the thing that I'll say is someone who's been listening to this, this conversation and all of the points have been very valid. But if you're trying to jam a read only user into a, a collaborative tool like Teams, then I would want to take a step back and say, is this the right tool? Right. For the right yeah. function right and yeah. uh right you, you start know, you, adding... use what you can but you know yeah. sometimes you have to advocate for the right tool in the right the right place well, at the right time well how like how would i go and solve that today if i needed to give a bunch of view only access to content i wouldn't go through all those other steps i just go out in one drive i'd create a folder the view only and then i provide that link out to the people that needed it for that done yeah yeah but, but the, no here's the problem with that Christian, yeah. you win the lottery and run away, <laughs> and all of that content is sitting in your OneDrive, and yeah. people are expecting to go find it. Now, their links but, are all broken. Right. So you're saying all this stuff. Are you trying to elicit an emotional response from me? Yes. I just won the lottery. I don't care. I, you don't, I don't care. care. Really? <laughs> but really? the people left behind do care. I stopped yeah. saying hit by a bus because that's bad. You How does that me. impact me, Sherry? <laughs> yeah, don't say I, hit by a bus because I would you got be hit that by a bus. I'm you got at me. No, 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 no. Wait, no. I didn't win the lottery, then get hit by a bus. <laughs> No, you use it. You get. You said I get hit by a bus, and I stopped uh, using okay. that okay. phrase because I'm like, that's just asking for bad juju. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather say you won the lottery. But okay. I'm with it on the the whole OneDrive thing because you know how it sets up. It the manager gets that notification. Hey, this person's leaving. You got 30 days, right, or whatever yeah. you you default it to, right? And if that manager doesn't go get that data, you lose that data, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I love the fact that Microsoft put in that link now that you can generate as an admin, as long as you have access and give it to anybody and then get into that OneDrive so you can go get that data, right? But still, you're gonna have those broken links, but at least they're giving us alter alternate methods of getting in there to get it, but someone still has to do it. Right, and we're talking about one, one drive for business and, and providing a, you know, a folder with those rules around it. Even if I'm hit by the bus or I win the lottery and run off, I buy an <laughs> island or whatever. Whatever. You're lost it. Lost, lost it. I'm I'm no longer there physically. Yeah. Uh, that uh, you know, the ownership of that content in that site remains with the with the company. Somebody there it rolls up and admins get that access. But yeah. again, but the, the problem is solved though of not changing the flat structure of teams not changing any of those permission level, levels, uh, you know, and for this, this purpose of giving read-only access to a subset of documents very quickly without headaches, that solves it. Well, it just reinforces my philosophy. You, a, you have to have information architecture. It needs to be planned. B, you have to have a documentation strategy based on the life cycle of that document. And not everything belongs in a team's um, file library. You don't take your J drive and dump it all into that one document library. You have 10,000 documents. You got to look at your documents and say, are these ratified? I mean, are these gospel documents? We're not going to put them in a document folder that can be edited anymore. 
that needs to be moved to another library and maybe provide a link back to that read-only version of that library. But you're, you're making my point for me, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> well, one other thing I'd like to add is as a person who doesn't um, gamble, I don't don't play the lottery. Okay. Statistically, it doesn't really change the, my chances of winning. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I have an equal chance of winning the lottery. So it could happen. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Everyone pray for me that I win Versus the lottery. getting hit by a bus. <laughs> yeah. I always found it better to mail them a check and say I would have lost this. Yeah. <laughs>